Hey there, and welcome to the third Shaping Fire sessions. I am your host from Shaping Fire, Shango Los. Um, our first Shaping Fire session was with uh, Kevin Jodry, and our second was with Dr. Ethan Russo. And now our third one here today starts with Jeff Lowenfels. Uh, Jeff Lowenfels is a big proponent of the soil food web and using living soil when growing cannabis. Um, he is the author of the trilogy of books, which are kind of the cornerstone uh, for a lot of people of uh, cannabis living soil, which is um, uh, teeming with microbes, teeming with nutrients, and teeming with fungi. And he also has got a new book coming out on uh, October 22nd uh, in 2019 this year. Um, all on autoflowers and so you can find links to all those books down in the the video description um, over the next three weeks we're going to be publishing a series of interviews that we did with um, Jeff Lowenfels on uh, the soil food web and what's going on inside your living soil when you're growing cannabis um, there are a handful of questions that I didn't think were you know addressed properly enough in cannabis and so I asked Jeff if I could ask him these very specific questions that we could all could use answers to to. And he's like, yeah, and I'm on it. So we got together and we recorded this series for you and we hope you like it. Um, we want to give special thanks to Patrick Smith and Green Bicycles, who is the sponsor for this series. Um, Kevin Jodry actually turned me on to uh, Green Bicycles one time when I was visiting Wonderland Nursery. He's all like, man, this is the compost tea we use on all my farms. It's awesome. We rely on it. And I'm like, hey, that was good enough for me. So I picked up some and uh, I've been using it for a few years with great results as well. Uh, and Patrick Smith is a really nice guy. And so, you know, nice guy, good product. So check it out. And we appreciate that his willingness to uh, sponsor this and, and make this happen. So um, if you have not already subscribed to our newsletter, I recommend that you do that. You can subscribe to the newsletter at shapingfire.com to stay up to date on the latest podcast episodes and video series like this that come out. Um, and also, uh, I encourage you to follow our Instagram at shapingfire for a lot of good content there that you won't find anywhere else. All right. Here we go with the first video, Jeff Lowenfels, Shaping Fire Sessions number three. So Jeff, yes. thank you so much for joining us today. You know, one of the things I wanted to start with is that, you know, mulching, cover crops, and top dressing are all very popular um, for really good reasons. Right. Um, but mulching, sometimes we can run into some problems because if we mulch soil that is already unbalanced, sometimes the mulch can add to that, the, 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 the lack of balance and make things even, even worse. And so what I'm keeping by tying up nutrients. And so um, my question for you is, is how can we best use mulch with cannabis uh, for, for the best plants we can grow? Okay. Well, first let me go back and correct what I think is sort of a misstatement. Uh, most people are really hung up on the idea that if you have a mulch layer that the soil microbes will go into the mulch, rob the soil of all sorts of nutrients as they, as they use the energy that they need to work up that mulch. That's, that's you know, ties up the nutrients in theory. Uh, you know, it does to a certain extent, but just at that layer, the interface between the mulch and the soil. Mm -hmm. So it's really not sucking up all the nutrients out of the soil and tying everything up. It's just that little layer. It's, it's sort of like pH, if I can digress just a little bit. We're concerned about pH, but the only area where pH really counts is right around the rhizosphere, right around the root, mm -hmm. up on the surface. Who cares what the pH is within degrees? Sure. But, and it's the same thing with the mulch. If, if you've got a layer of mulch, you're gonna lose a little bit of nutrient just at that interface, but down where the roots are, you're not gonna have a problem. Mm. Um, so the question then becomes, what kind of mulch is the right kind of mulch to use for cannabis? And, and uh, I like to use a mulch that, that generates more bacteria than fungus. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, this conversation has been uh, going on for a while, and I have been told, although I haven't spoken directly with her, uh, that Dr. Elaine thinks a little bit more fungal uh, than I'm suggesting makes sense. And as I think about it, uh, I'm, I'm still on the bacterial side. A, a, a green mulch would be bacterial. Mm -hmm. the, the fungal comes in for the plants that, that take a long time to, to grow. Uh, we were talking autoflowers. Those are quick. Those are clearly bacterial to me. Uh, if you've got something that's got a lot of Afghani in it, that, that, that got a lot of, you know, uh, 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 
long-term growth that takes six months, you know, then you might want to have a little bit more fungal. You always need some fungal in the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, so the mulch that I like uh, is, is, a, is a green mulch. I'll use actual grass clippings and, and straw and hay. Mm -hmm. and not, you know, I've got to worry about seeds, obviously, if I'm going to be using my soil again. Um, and just a, a, some leaves I'll throw in there. Um, but I definitely mulch all my plants. So some people uh, don't want to use their dead leaves from the cannabis plant in the soil right. because they think, um, oh, it's necrotic and, it, and right. there's something wrong with it and now I'm putting it in my soil. Whereas others are all like, the cannabis plant already has the key nutrients, it makes the best mulch. Right. What are your thoughts? Well, I believe in what's known as the law of return. Uh, <clears throat> the only reason why we fertilize plants is because we harvest the stuff that's supposed to fall down from the plant, decay, and regenerate the soil. Uh, and, you know, so we take the flowers, we take, we take uh, you know, the top sugar leaves. Uh, I am a big believer in letting the rest of the plant, including the roots, go into that soil and become part of your soil mix. I guess that, I guess that makes sense like a tree, right? Because you know, with, without man's involvement or human involvement, the tree itself will just drop its leaf Absolutely. and it provides its own mulch for the next year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is called the law of return. And I'm trying to, if I can remember the name of the, oh gosh, uh, it'll come to me sometime. But, it, but uh, you know, back in the day when, when NPK was invented, artificial manures, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they realized that what was happening was we were removing all of the great stuff from the soil. Uh, and in fact, this is why the United States Manifest Destiny was really all about getting better soil because we were removing all of the nutrients from the soil and not putting anything back. Mm. That only occurred when we came and started taking stuff from the plants. As they continue to drop stuff, they feed themselves, they continue to grow. I like to say nobody ever fertilizes the redwoods. How'd they get that big? Right. So, yeah, we digress. Yeah. <laughs> right on, cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you.